In this new video tutorial, uh, we will go through Redux and Redux Toolkit. So we will give our application a global state management. First of all, let's see what are the packages that we already installed with our uh, Yeoman generator init command. So first of all, we have the Redux.js Toolkit library, that is the main one. Uh, then we also have the Redux, the React Redux library that connects the Redux state with our React components. And we also have a couple of plugins and middlewares, middlewares like Redux Persist and Redux Saga that we will see uh, later. So how it is managed? Inside the Redux store folder, we have uh, all the Redux word. So the main uh, file, it is of course the index. Uh, the index is responsible of uh, uh, importing uh, uh, the slices, importing also uh, some extra actions. Uh, it also imports all the sagas that are uh, special functions that uh, we will analyze later and also it will start the sagas. Uh, it combines all the reducers, uh, it creates also uh, an history object uh, that is used uh, to connect our routing also inside Redux. So as you can see here, indeed, inside of the Redux state manager, uh, we are also including a router middleware. Uh, that is exported from the connected React router. That is another package that actually connects our React router DOM with our uh, Redux state manager. The Redux uh, Persist is also another plugin that uh, it is actually used to save the state of our app inside uh, a cache. So this is almost what the Redux index file is doing. And this is kind of a static file. We don't have actually to touch this. Uh, it comes, as we said, with the Yeoman generator init command and that's it. The main two folders that instead we will work on, it is, uh, uh, they are the slices and the extractions folders. Uh, we have actually uh, a couple of commands. In this lecture, we will see just one of them to interact with these two folders. So the first thing that we should do to actually create a new slice, it is to launch this command, yo react slice. We have to put a new slice, uh, maybe in camel case, better. And in a few seconds, you will see that in the slices folder, a new folder to do list is created. So actually the only manual operation we have to do to actually uh, import and use this new slice in our application is to manually import it in this index file inside the slices folder. So we can copy and place and paste this template. We add our slice to the reducers. We add all these actions to a global actions object and we also add the selectors. If we have defined, if we have also say sagas, we have to add it here as well, like this. Since we wrote yes here in the creation of the slice, uh, a saga file is being created, it is empty, so we can import and nothing will really change up to now. Now, let's open the slice and see which files have been created. So first of all, we have the index file, uh, where the initial state uh, is defined and also the main function create slice. The create slice, as you can see, it is already uh, set with the name that we give to our slice. It is also importing the initial state and it defines a reducer that of course it is empty because this is the part where we should put the business logic. So let's start from the initial state. The initial state has a to-do list state that is an interface automatically created by Yeoman and our generator and it is created inside this index, inside the interfaces folder, uh, the interfaces folder. So we created a separated folders because here we would also create other uh, interfaces for our uh, slice, as we will see later. Uh, for example, to define the interface of the action. So let's start by defining here an items as an array of string. We save the interface. If we switch back here, of course, this is returning now an error from TypeScript because our object is not defining the items. So let's define it as an empty array. Now that our items is defined in the initial state, we can also add some action to it, like add item. Uh, 
if you do state dot, uh, automatically WebStorm is suggesting us what is inside our state. Uh, we should remember here that the state, it is not the global state of our application, but it is just the state of the current slides. So for example here, just the items array. Now what we can push, as you can see here, we are also passing another parameter that is our action actually. If we try to write action dot something, we have a type and a payload and payload has, has, uh, has a, a type, it has a, because we didn't specify anything. So let's go back to our interface. Let's do export interface at item action and we can tell it the payload type in this case is a string so we can save it we can copy we can go here we can specify the type of our payload as you can see add item dot action dot payload is a string items is an array of strings and everything works just fine. So we defined our first action and now if we go to the selectors folder here we can add our selector to actually retrieve from our react components the items array in this easy way. Here we are importing the root state from our redux store folder and in this way our React components and TypeScript will know that the returns of this getter or selector, it is an array of string because we are of course passing here our array of strings items. Now let's see how all of this interact with React of course. So let's go back to our dashboard. Let's clear something. say items let's go in our hook and we can use the use selector hook from react redux let's import selectors from our redux store folder we can even do like this and we can go and grab our get to do list items so as you can see here, items in array of strings. So everything works, TypeScript is working fine. And we can pass these items in our index file. Let's create a map of these items. Let's remember when we do a map always to put the key and it should be unique. In this case, I will assume just that our item, they have all different uh, names. So this key will be unique inside of this map. Now, before check if the, everything works, let's just put here also an escape in case these items is not defined because of how, uh, how the Redux persist works. Let's just put this. And as you can see here, the items, of course, it is empty. So let's add some functionality to actually add a new item. Okay, we just created our uh, text field and now we can add a new item. Of course, now we are just creating the item in a, uh, temporary, uh, for in a temporary state variable inside our dashboard. It is this one. So we also want a button to actually submit this to our Redux store.
we do this, we use the dispatch hook. We import the actions. As you can see, it is important from the main Redux folder. Dot add item. And here we should pass what uh, our action is expecting. That is a string. So we will pass new item. Here we will add dispatch and new item as dependencies. And what we want to do after dispatching is also to reset our new item variable. Let's go back here. Let's create button. Now the only thing that we have to do is to be sure that when we go to push to our state items, state items is actually defined. So if it is defined, it will be just its value. Otherwise, we will initialize with a new array. So let's back to our application. Test item one, submit, and it is added here. Test item two, submit, and here we go. So a really good functionality about Redux, it is its Chrome extension Redux, as we can see here. This is a really powerful tool because it allows us to check what's going on, on a, inside our application. So for example, here we do test item three and submit. Here we can check, we can check what, what's going on, so which kind of action it is dispatched. If we go to action, we can see the payload, and as we know, the payload is just the string we are passing. We can check all the state of our Redux store, and we can see also the difference. So as you can see here, our to-do list uh, slice, uh, in particular its items array, has a new value test item 3. But what if we refresh our application? Even if we refresh the application, our items are saved. So how does it work? We can see here that the, the Redux Persist plugin, it is actually rehydrating our store. What is rehydrate? It means that if we have a local uh, cache, a local storage uh, object that represents our store previously saved, then it will be retrieved and it will be replaced to the current state. So as you can see here, the to-do list, when we initialize our page, the state, uh, it is empty. And after the rehydration, hydration, our items have been fulfilled. If we want to go even further with this, we can go to application, local storage. And as you can see here, there is a persist root. There is uh, local storage is just a key value, uh, key value pairs storage. And our Redux persist plugin is creating a new key with persist root name and the value that is the stringify of the, the Redux object. So as you can see in this value, there is everything we are saving when we use the app. And when we refresh, what Redux persist does is just to retrieve this value and push in our state. This is the action that is doing that. So even if we add a new item and we save, every time we are saving, so we are modifying our uh, uh, store, Redux persist, it is actually saving all our store inside the local storage here. Indeed, if you check this string here, as you can see, it is saving the test item four. If we put a five and we submit, the five element is added to the key value. And every time we refresh, again, this value is retrieved and our storage uh, updated. So this is pretty much it about the uh, Redux uh, uh, libraries and functionalities, at least for its basics. Uh, in the next uh, video tutorials, we will see also how to manage asynchronous functions and how we will deal specifically with Ajax. Uh, but first of all, we will understand what an Ajax call is and how to handle with it.